Hi everybody and welcome to this week's webinar from Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland. And this week we are joined by Michelle Gall from, uh, she's the co-owner co of Echo Health and Beauty down in Wexford. So welcome Michelle and thank you for joining us. Hi Karina, thanks for having me. And we are, today we are talking about uh, treating skin from within, uh, getting the best results for both your clients and business. So I suppose I just want to ask you a little bit first about the salon. So I think you were saying to me, um, I don't know, this morning or yesterday, that you're open to the four years, just four years this year, was it? Yeah, so four years in the March just gone. Um, it's absolutely flown by, so it has. So yeah, five years next March. And it's, it's health and beauty. So you, you do like a combination of what I would sort of refer to as standard beauty treatments uh, combined with a lot of natural stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we do, as you say, all of your kind of standard brows and um, nails, tans, that kind of thing. And then we do uh, facials. Um, but myself, I'm an acupuncturist and a naturopath. And then Suzanne is the other girl. So she would be into yoga. She's a yoga teacher. So we kind of use all of that just to combine everything to our clients. Yeah. Really. And I actually, I, want, I wanted to ask you, um, because you're a beauty therapist as well as being a nat naturopath, am I pronouncing that right, and an acupuncturist. Which did you do first? Did you become a beauty therapist first and then the other thing afterwards, or was it the other way around? I started acupuncture first, um, and then the more that I got into it, um, the more I realized that I wanted to kind of have something to go with it. So that's when I started beauty. Um, and then I kind of intertwined the two of them because they overlap so much, so much. Yeah, because I suppose a lot of people don't really think about it that way, that they overlap. Um, and Suzanne is the same, is she? She's a, she's a beauty therapist as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then sure. she went on and she trained in yoga. Okay. And, and then the two of you decided to go into business together. Yeah, yeah. We were working together before here and we both just happened to talk one day and both said we wanted to go on and do something bigger. And yeah, we decided then that's when Echo was born. Okay, that's yeah, big leap, you know, becoming a uh, entrepreneurs. <laughs> exactly, big leap of faith for sure. Okay, so um, we will talk there about uh, our topic, which I suppose generally we wanted to talk about the whole idea of treating skin from within. And I wanted to ask you what way you combine traditional facials or beauty treatments with the like with natural methods, like an, like if you could give an overview of how that works. Okay, um, so as with any facial, um, the client will come in and you'll do a full consultation with them. Um, and then obviously from my standpoint and what I my views are with health, um, it would be a lot to do with your diet. Um, you know, we already know that food has a massive impact on your skin. Mm -hmm. Like for example, chocolate we know makes your face break out. Mm -hmm. But it's also um, you know, what you're putting in to help treat or heal the skin and um, what you're eating and um so people as well who would be on the pill that would deplete a lot of meat um minerals and nutrients. Um basically um, stress wise how they're working what that has an effect because that has a massive effect on the endocrine system um, what else would there be um, my mind has gone blank now um, oh what products you're using as well um, so it's not just what you're using on your okay. face it's what you're using on your body because a lot of the, um, the products that we use in everyday life and not just um, for beauty products but cleaning products as well so they have a massive effect on our microbiome, which is massively important for our skin health. Um, and then with regards to kind of deodorants and things like that. So we're um, a big advocate for natural deodorants because a lot of the chemicals that are in them, um, again, they're endocrine disruptors. So it's, it's trying to get an overview of our client and see, put all the pieces together and just see where we can help them. Um, so it's not just about what they're putting on their skin, it's what they're putting inside of them as well. 
Okay, so like, I never thought about that end of it, like cleaning products and things can have an effect. Huge, huge. Um, like when you think of it, um, it's only when you kind of start, or you plant the seed with people that it kind of has a little light bulb moment. But when you're spraying your kitchen counters or whatever, um, and I used to um, have an argument with my partner over this, he doesn't do it anymore, but he would spray and say, we'd have our fruit bowl on the counter and the spray would go all over the fruit bowl. Then you're picking them up and you know, you're eating yeah. it or washing it, but you know, you're eating that as well. So it's yeah. just you know, from that standpoint, just simple things like that. Um, okay. God, I know, yeah, never thought I'm going to be really paranoid about going around, yeah. especially these days, you know, because we've become so, you know, conscious of cleaning everything constantly because of COVID. Yeah. That's something now that we, we all need to remember to be careful that we're not, uh, yeah, yeah. ingesting, <laughs> yeah. ingesting the cleaning products, yeah. Exactly. And uh, would a client then say on it, like typically, um, would your, you know, a client come in for, a facial or would they come in for one of your other natural treatments or would they actually come in for a combination of both like do you what way would you suggest it like how do they how do they go from one to the other either or to be honest i mean um one of my mass like a lot of what i do would be based around fertility say for example would be one of my treatments um and you would have a woman coming in and she, you'd be treating her for that. But she might say like her skin is breaking out. And that's obviously something to do with what's going on with her um, internally. Yeah. With the reproductive system. And then, you know, you'd be treating her for that and she'd come back and she'd have facials. Or someone might come in for a facial and you might see something going on internally and vice versa get them to come for the acupuncture, reflexology, Reiki, whatever it is that would suit them best. Okay. And when you say that um, you treat a lot of uh, fertility issues, what, like, again, with what methods? Is, is that acupuncture? Yeah, um, so it would be acupuncture and with the naturopathy as well. So it's kind of getting all the tools in your arsenal and putting them together and just getting the best results that you can. And it's going back as well to the, the, the beauty products that they're using. Um, so, you know, a lot of these products contain ingredients that are massive, huge endocrine disruptors and the fertility rates at the moment, like everybody I think knows someone who is suffering with some kind of fertility issues, yeah. a man or woman or recurrent miscarriages, you know, so it's educating and giving people the option to use something better or not to use what they, you know, to have the choice or just to, to educate them really. Okay. Interesting. And then just uh, with the types of skin issues that best benefit from, you know, the combination of the traditional cosmetics, say facial and the natural treatments. Um, you mentioned there, I think, um, breakouts and stuff like that. Is, is that the, the main one or is there a, a whole range of skin issues that benefit? No, I mean, there's a whole rake of issues. I mean, and one of the, the most common, especially with Irish people, psoriasis is huge. Um, okay. Yeah, so, you know, that's, it. obviously that's <clears throat> with the skin cells and the turnover and things like that, but it's coming internally as well. And a lot of it stems back to your gut health. So it's... Um, and I'm sure most people have heard now at this point about your gut health and how important yeah. it is overall systemic health. But if that's not functioning properly, um, you get something called leaky gut. So that is giving you a systemic inflammation all over the body. So it's just trying to help them to heal themselves internally. Um, and psoriasis, you'll see it like mostly I'd say it's when people are getting a spray tan, for example. And they'll be saying like, oh, you know, I have it in here or eczema or whatever it is um so and then again it ties back they're having their spray tan and you get chatting to them and giving them advice and then they might come back to you in a couple of weeks time to try and get that under control and it's it's on the face as well and you see it in the hair and all the usual places like that but, but um yeah and then again and the, what about um you were saying um i think you said like breakouts like i guess acne you know yeah. Um, you were saying there about like 
you know, we all know, I suppose, years ago, it was always like, you know, when you were a teenager, um, you know, if you, you got like a breakout, it was like, oh, you shouldn't be eating any crisps or chocolate. <laughs> they were always the things that removed diet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like something like acne, um, that you're, you know, because you hear an awful lot these days about adult acne and about, you know, people who are older getting breakouts. Um, is it like a combination of, would you do a combination of a traditional facial and what sort of a natural therapy would you apply there? Would it be the acupuncture or? Yeah, um, so again, it depends on the cause. So you and I both could have acne, but we could have it for very different reasons. So it depends on the cause. Like I could have it because I'm working a really, really stressful job and it's affecting my adrenals and, you know, my hormones are going into overdrive. Whereas you might not be looking after your skin, right? You might just be eating bad food. So the, yeah. So say, for example, with me, if it's stress and overwork, then acupuncture would definitely benefit me. And then for you, it would be more so maybe a, uh, a naturopathic consultation and going through you know what your diet is if there's any supplements you should add or better skincare routine um or, or just kind of basic things like that it just depends every single person is different so it's different yeah and what actually for uh, you just said there with supplements what like what sort of supplements do, would you be recommending to people with skin issues okay um so Probably my favorite supplement, and I think there's nobody, obviously you need to kind of have a consultation with someone to, to take it, but I think most people benefit from omega-3. Um, that's for general health and inflammation, it's amazing. Um, you know, and even if you have, I think people think that it's like a fatty um, supplement. Yeah. But, it's an oil, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But for acne, there's always an inflammation there. So it just helps to take that down. But what omega-3 does is it helps your liver to regulate hormones. So again, um, it would help in that sense. But vitamin C is amazing. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's a natural hydrator. It takes down color in your skin. Um, so your veins and capillaries are lined by collagen and elastin and vitamin C is needed to do that. So it helps with aging as well. Um, and then zinc for your skin healing, but also for your overall immune system. Um, what other supplements are there? Then, you know, you could have your selenium and your magnesium, all those kind of things you could add in then as well. But it's different for each person. And I definitely don't believe in just going and getting a multivitamin. Um, so it's very personalized and, you know, you might need vitamin C, whereas I might need zinc or you might need more than I. So a multivitamin, I just don't feel cuts it. You need to be, and it changes as well from year to year. Like you're, you're not the same, um, you know, your levels will change as your diet changes or your lifestyle changes, what that, or, you know, just basically like that. Yeah. And do you, like, do, when people come into you, would they know that they were um, deficient in something? Like, do they get, because, like, I know myself, I've had, like, like that thing you said there about it changes all the time. Like, every time I have my bloods done, uh, which is something I never did when I was younger, and I'm quite good at doing it now. And every time I have my bloods done, I'm deficient in something different that I wasn't <laughs> deficient in the previous time. I know. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, how does that happen? <laughs> Yeah, it just has a knock-on effect. Um, and, you know, what you're eating and the weather as well. I think if you're outside and you're more active, then you're doing different things as well. But, yeah, no, it definitely changes. Everything changes. And your hormone changes. So it's going to, especially for women, I mean, there's four different stages through the month that your hormones are going up and down and up and down. So, you know, it's it's a roller coaster for women. So definitely. Yeah. And I suppose, would you get people... Um coming in with with skin issues that are you know like that thing you said there of you know with hormones changing over the course of the month like what what do you do with people who say they get their breakout once a month or twice a month is there any way of regulating that um so uh, do you mean um around menstruation when you yeah know, you a traditional breakout um i mean that's kind of part and parcel i mean you can help it depends on how severe it is but i yeah. think 
point mo because you know your hormones dip and peak um, yeah. and 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 again it depends on how it's if it's really bad then yes there are things that you can do or steps you can take but it's kind of part and parcel unfortunately and some people are lucky they don't get anything but. yeah it's just i think yeah some people just have to kind of go okay it's that time of the month yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, yeah. you're not, I'm not talking if you just get a little one kind of here. Yeah. There. But no, if it's big, full on flare ups, then definitely there's something underlying or going on there. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you had said to me that you incorporate uh, facial cupping, and I can't pronounce the other thing. Gosh, that you said. Say that again. Washa. Yeah. Um, so you incorporate that. Okay, you're going to have to really explain that one to me. <laughs> you, so you incorporate that into uh, facials and you said that you use Chinese, is it face reading? Face reading. Oh, sorry, face reading. Okay. So how does that work? Um, so from, from the Chinese standpoint, um, their philosophy is your face is basically a map. Um, so each part of your face represents a different organ or a different part of your body. Um, I mean, you know, straight away, the skin and the face can tell a multitude of things, you know, straight away when someone comes in and they're off or they're really healthy, you know, someone either has that really fresh glow or yeah. they have gray pallor and they just don't look healthy. So that's the first thing that you, you would look at. And then, um, as I said, each area of the face. So again, going back to um, menstruation and the time of the month, you'd see here is kind of all about the reproductive area. Okay. Um, and then under the eyes then would be your adrenals. So again, you know straight away when someone is tired, what do they get? It's just black, dark circles underneath. So that would yeah. be very uh, adrenals. Um, and then on the filtrum here, one that I would use quite a bit, as I said, because I would treat quite a lot for fertility as well, um, is here on your filtrum above your lip is your heart. So your heart is very prevalent or relevant to um, your reproductive system in Chinese medicine. So if you get kind of any marks or coloration, discoloration or anything in that area. And then another one then for skin is here is your lungs. So you'll see smokers, they often have like roughness or bumps or anyone who has asthma or any kind of respiratory issues, then you'll see it here. Um, and then the liver then, so each organ is um, associated with an emotion and then the liver would be anger or frustration. So you know when you see someone who goes around and they're frustrated and like, they have the marks here constantly. Yeah. So you know which organ to try and help. And it's not necessarily, it's not something physiologically wrong with an organ. It's just the energy is slightly off with it. So you try and okay. rectify. So when you rectify it that way or you help it here, it kind of has a knock-on effect with it and you know what's going on with it. Okay. So um, so that thing that you held up there, what yeah. was that? This stone here? Yeah. So that's the gua sha stone. Okay. And again, this comes back to the, the Chinese actually originally used to use, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the Chinese soup spoons, they're ceramic and they're kind of shaped like that. Yeah, they yeah. They used them years ago instead of these and then it kind of eventually adapted into this, I suppose. Um, this is made from jade stone. It's really, really cool. And, and it's literally, gua sha means, it's, it's like to scrape. So I'll kind of show okay. you so you kind of hold it flat and what you're doing is you're bringing blood and chi to it but you do it on the face and it's shaped for different parts of the face so you fit it in okay. but what you do is you're bringing in fresh chi blood and you're toning and firming the body as well but it's lovely and cooling because it's jade too um, but also it's not even facials um, I'll incorporate that so if I'm doing a pedicure and someone says they have tightness in their foot this is great for getting in or in around the neck um it's great for getting in so you can incorporate it across the board it's not just with facials and it's lovely because i see a lot of salons or um skincare companies are seeming to incorporate incorporate these a lot more into their facials and um, so you see yeah. this jade roller as well is massive so that would have been along the same lines as well so it's becoming a lot more mainstream i suppose rather than just with the yeah 
so you you would use that though um in in if you were doing a facial on somebody you would incorporate that particular stone would you yeah not every time um, yeah. just if, if if it needs to be used or if someone wants it to be used definitely yeah yeah and the um the facial cupping yeah um, because we like we all know i suppose we all became very familiar with the whole cupping thing when was it Gwyneth Paltrow was going around with the, the yeah. mask on her back? Michael but, Phelps as well, he had it. Yeah. Um, but the, the Agnes that I spoke to last week about the face modeling, she mentioned it as well. So you can do you, it's done on the face too. How yeah. does that work? Um, so the one I have here now, this is this one. It's a very kind of basic one. This is the ones that we have for sale here. Yeah. And um, this is my own one that I use at home. Um, so literally it works by suction. So you just kind of stick it to yourself like that. So there's two different sizes. And um, I don't know if anyone, well, actually, I think we all pretty much did it in Buick College was the vacuum suction. It's kind of works on the similar principle to that. So you're draining lymph away and you're de-puffing and detoxifying the face. Um, but you're also bringing more blood to the area as well. So literally you're kind of going out into the lymph nodes. Um, and then this one then in for around your eye, but it just gives a great freshness and glowiness to the skin. And it's something nice just to offer your client as well that they can't get everywhere. Um, okay. Really, really lovely. And then as I say, I use it on a client and then I have it to offer to sell it to them to bring home, to maintain or enhance their, their skin when they're at home as well. Okay, so a person can, after they get like, say the facial done, with you they can buy they can buy what is it called the facial cup facial cup. yeah yeah and you can and they can do it themselves at home yeah oh that's very interesting so it's, it's um it's a good sort of business venture to do as well because you can there's there's a bit of retailing involved exactly and you know they're seeing benefits from you know you do this lovely facial on them they look great and you want them to maintain that when they go home so they're just yeah benefits and that they keep coming back to you I suppose from a business point of view it's to keep the client happy I suppose yeah exactly yeah and then just you mentioned earlier on about um you know the the you're well you said to me anyway that you're a huge advocate for clean low-tox beauty um while achieving the best results um I suppose like I know you spoke there about like cleaning products and, and areas that like you know we, we didn't realize that there were the stuff landing in our skin or going into our bodies but in terms of like actual beauty products and um, for you at this point like are there certain ingredients that that are still in some beauty products that for you are just such no no at this point in time i mean i know we've come an awful long way you know from the olden days of things that we used to do but like is there still stuff out there that you would be like no way not, not putting that on the skin 100% um obviously there's you know um there's definitely but like one of the first changes that I actually made was and I, I suppose it is in a sense that beauty product would have been perfume um I was like I had every perfume love perfume but it's actually there is these things called pantholates in perfumes and what they do is they make the smell stick to you and last longer okay but they are absolutely huge endocrine disruptors and they're toxic to fetuses and babies as well um so i mean it, it's not natural when you can smell something two weeks after you've you've worn it and you can still yeah. smell on it um or one of the main things i look out for now on a product is the word fragrance Okay, <laughs> is considered a trade secret and they don't actually have to tell you what fragrance is but fragrance is a cocktail of a, you know it can be anything up to 3000 chemicals and they don't have to disclose okay. what that is so that's a major kind of alarm bell for me um, and of course when you're training in college as well when you're doing the, the bikini waxing we used talc and we all know of a company well i think most people know of a company um that had a massive massive lawsuit for containing talc and being um, carcinogenic and causing kids to have cancer yeah. 
Um, so, I mean, talc is in the asbestos family and you're going to want to yeah. put it in an area where, you know, it's really intimate and, um, you know, can cause massive, massive, and you're breathing it. When you put on one area, it's so fine. You're inhaling it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that definitely. And as I said earlier, the aluminium in the deodorants, um, I can't even think off the top of my head what else there is, but yeah, no, there's definitely, definitely. But and there's again, like, it, like, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that like, you know, we have, we have come a long way, I think, you know, and, and people are, I think every year we say now that like, one of the things that's trending is, you know, thing, you know, um, natural. People want to know what's going into things. Um, yeah. People want to see, you know, the, the the natural benefits. But like, is there still, you know, is it still a like, you know, the way I think somebody said to me before that like you can be quite free and easy with your terminology and some, you know, words like vegan, organic. Yeah. You know, are, do they have to be certified or can you get away with saying it and it's not true? I mean, you can, you know, you can just have some ingredients that are in it and that are organic. It's very like, and the, each country and each, um, you know, they have different ways. So you can say natural, but what exactly does natural mean? And, you know, you could have and yeah. ingredients. Um, in it but yeah no it, and it can be very 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 misleading and it's the same as well with the likes of um we I, I call it well it's called greenwashing and you know the way you have people advertising sustainable products but it's yeah. not actually sustainable because I don't know it's traveled half the way across the world and used up how much uh renewable yeah. our, resources and things like that and yeah it's the same with beauty products as well and um, it's very loose the ter uh, the uh, the terminology on what you can actually yeah. say and get away with yeah it can be very misleading yeah but actually, so, so you, you like you and, and uh, Suzanne obviously would be you know quite strict then in terms of you know the, the brands that you would carry in the salon yeah yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a learning curve. When we started out, I think we've come a long way. We always knew that we wanted to be more holistic and natural. And it hasn't, like, the, the longer we're open, the more we learn, the more we want to change. So we do have some brands that we've added in over time that we're loving. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, myself included, there's still some products that I use. And it's going to be the way with everyone that you cannot find a good alternative to. So what I do is use that. And when something better comes along, when you know better, yeah. you do better so you can use it. Um, so that it's kind of the same with the clients as well. It's not to shame someone into using something. It's just to educate them and let them know. And then eventually one thing leads to another and you might just change one thing or you might not, but you know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. As you said, yeah, it's kind of a bit by bit um process yes, and yes. then just i suppose um kind of to return to what i was asking you originally you know as a business model um you know does it work well in the salon to have a combination of both styles of service um you know for instance you have a lot of uh i what i'm going to call normal treatments or regular treatments and then you've got a lot of the more you know offbeat natural holistic type treatments and they, you know, they complement, we, you know, we, we've decided that they complement each other. We know that, but for, for you as a business, and then I suppose for um, the client themselves, like, does it give you a better client reach? Like, have you found that, you know, you're able to, to attract, you know, the type of client that wants one thing more than the other, and then you'll, you, you end up cross selling or upselling or, you know, that kind of way. How does, has that been working out for you for the last four years? Well, I would say definitely it would help a lot with even client retention, but also people would refer a lot to us um, because we have kind of more of a broader range to yeah. offer. So not just coming and getting your standard massage or facial. 
um, and you can offer more to your client as well and you can help them more and then between the two of us then we kind of refer back and forth or you know if if we can't do anything then we'll, we'll try and find someone who can help you but definitely as I you know when you have a client in and you build up a rapport with your client and you get talking to them and you get their background a bit um, you might find that another treatment might suit them better so they'll come back and they'll have that but definitely a lot of our clients would be um repeat clients but also they refer their friends to us um and then they'd be coming to us that way as well so definitely it's it's hugely beneficial for us to have um both kind of ways to offer yeah it's like it's a, it's a good business model and um just what you were saying there before we came on air actually um you were saying that like you're you're really busy since you reopened um mm -hmm. what did you find um did you you guys reopened on the did you do the 29th of june yeah. yeah yeah and did you find that uh like what were people rushing back to have done or was yes. everything hands down the eyebrows yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. eyebrows and, and they're waxing and um, they were okay. when the necessities were got out of the way then the niceties came along so they came back and they had all their their luxury treatments or the nice things but okay so that would be like nails and things of it yeah 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 definitely um, yeah i think yeah anyone i spoke to that's what they said as well the eyebrows <laughs> yeah 100 yeah, percent. you have to get those guys fixed yeah um okay listen that's absolutely brilliant um very interesting um topic about i suppose just the whole idea of like you can you can combine um services to sort of make one one salon um which is um uh yeah as you said it's, it's four like years of growing months, yeah yeah and um and how how big is the premises how many are working there is it just two Three. viewers or more um, well, Suzanne has just had her baby, so she's on maternity at the moment. So there's myself and another girl here at the moment. Um, so we're kept going at the minute. So we're looking forward to Sue coming back. Um, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Listen. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we wish you every luck going forward in the future. And hopefully, we'll chat again. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. And uh, keep an eye on our social uh, for what we have lined up for next week. It should be next Thursday again at 12. Um, until then, thanks again, Michelle. And we'll Thank talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.